Not every idea is a good idea. Not every idea matters. And not every idea should be pursued. Steve Ballmer served as CEO of Microsoft from 2000 to 2014, a time of immense growth and innovation for the company. But what made him such a successful leader? One key factor is his unwavering belief in the value Microsoft products could bring to customers. He wasn't just selling software, he was selling the potential to transform businesses and lives. Ballmer's presentations were legendary. He exuded infectious enthusiasm, using clear and concise language to communicate the benefits of Microsoft products. He understood that people don't just buy products, they buy into the vision and the story behind them. Whether you're a seasoned entrepreneur or just starting out, understanding how to communicate the worth of your product or idea is crucial. So, buckle up, because we're about to learn from the master himself, Steve Ballmer. Number one for me, life lesson, is that ideas matter. Now people say, of course ideas matter. What kind of stupid life lesson is it that ideas matter? The truth of the matter is, this is both under and over appreciated. Most people think every idea is a good idea, as long as they had it. The truth of the matter is, not every idea is a good idea. Not every idea matters. And not every idea should be pursued. And if you're in a field like I am, or was, of innovation, not every idea is a good idea, even if it strikes you that way on first blush. In fact, most people are lucky to have one idea that really matters in their whole life. That's not a criticism, but earth-shattering, life-changing ideas are very few and far between. Research insights, investment insights, innovations, a good idea needs to be cherished and nurtured. I apologize in advance for the sports reference, but I would say get in the weight room, the weight room of life. What do you do in a weight room? If you're an athlete or a kind of retired senior citizen like me, you prepare, you prepare, you build new capabilities, you get stronger, you get faster, you figure out how to get leverage. And yet in your business lives, those are precisely the right messages. One of the things that I think has made Microsoft the company that it is today is that we weren't afraid to get in the weight room. In the late 80s, we had plenty of customers, investors tell us we would quote, never be an enterprise company. Today, many people think the bulk of the 350 billion of value in Microsoft is in our enterprise business. We weren't afraid to sit there even before we had it figured out and just work to prepare, to get better, to build new capabilities. And whether we're talking about what you need to do for your startup, for the hospital that you join, or for yourself personally, you have to build new capabilities, new quickness, and new leverage. Optimism. Smart people love to be negative. It's my basic sort of summary of life. Smart people love to be critical, they love to be negative, they love to find fault, and you have to to succeed. On the other hand, if you really want to be successful, you have to stay optimistic. Colin Powell, who, who ran the Joint Chiefs of Staff for the US, has written books on leadership, but he's got one line I love. I love, optimism is a force multiplier. Some of the folks I was sitting down with, uh, uh, I don't know what you call it, the other part of the union, uh, some of the union members before we started, you know, we were, we were talking about goofy YouTube speeches and videos that some of them had watched of me speaking. And w why? I am optimistic and leaders, whether they're optimistic or not, you better project it. Because if you're not leading with optimism, if you don't believe, nobody else is gonna go your direction. Nobody's gonna be with you, nobody's gonna follow, nobody's really gonna buy in. 
you really need to learn how to tell a story. Particularly with MBAs, and when I say MBAs, I'm really speaking generally to the group, but I'm being parochial because I can't come up with a general expression for MBA tonight. But I do find that a lot of people coming out of school focus a lot on the what we should do and don't spend enough time learning how to tell the story of why their idea brings value to others. The number of storytellers in the world is very, very small. Uh, I don't know what exactly I will do next in my life. I don't know, I'm not sure. I don't have an idea. But I've been spending a lot of time in the weight room, reading up on the US government budget, healthcare costs and debt. And I say that to people, and nobody knows what the heck I'm doing. I can't explain, I don't know. Earlier this week, I came up with a way to explain it. As CEO of Microsoft, we were, I was responsible for signing on something called our 10Q. Every, every quarter, you had to publish it. And it had to tell a story of your company. You had to get up in front of analysts. I didn't do that very well, but nonetheless, I did it well, I just didn't do it very frequently. Nonetheless, you got out every, every quarter, you put out a statement. You explained yourself, you told the story, what's good, what's bad, what's working, what's not working. The US government doesn't put out a quarterly statement. There's no regular story from our government about what's working and what's not working. Where cost really is going and where it's not. What the president is trying to do. The State of the Union is a long list. And whether you like Republicans or Democrats, you still don't get a simple and succinct story. I started telling people this week I want to work from publicly available information on putting together a 10Q for the government. People said, oh, we get that. That's a story. A story that you can start telling and people understand. You can have a brilliant idea for your startup. You've got to become a storyteller. Some of you will say, I'm not an expert at telling stories and telling yarns. You're not great public speakers. That is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a clear, simple, concise way to convey the value of the ideas that are in your head. I think it's one of the, the most underappreciated skills in business. It's one of the skills that we talk about, we did talk about explicitly at Microsoft. And if I could wish you one, one new capability to go build, it would be the capability of storytelling. Before we continue with our discussion, are you ready to turn your business dreams into reality? If yes, introducing our groundbreaking online courses in entrepreneurship. Cashflow Academia, the ultimate guide to building a successful business from the ground up. From developing a rock-solid business plan to mastering digital marketing strategies, our comprehensive curriculum is crafted to meet the demands of today's dynamic market. Get ready to unleash your creativity, harness your potential, and take your business to new heights. Enroll now and embark on a journey of entrepreneurship that will redefine your future. Visit our website or click the link below to secure your spot. Tell it. You better stay on top of yourself and, and really measure. Unless people measure themselves, you don't get any better. You cannot succeed unless you are really holding yourself accountable and owning outcomes. Believe me, I've seen plenty of people at Microsoft, various places in the tech industry, brilliant people, who when it came time to execute and actually count success, and eh, maybe not so much. Maybe not so much. You get, in order to do that, you have to actually know what the goal is. If the goal was to get to 450 million users and then sell to Facebook, WhatsApp did a hell of a job. Right, and I mean that, it's not a, I mean, it's a hell of a job at 19 billion, 55 people, that's a hell of a job. But you have to decide what outcome do you want? Bill Gates was offered seven and a half million dollars to sell all of Microsoft in 1979. It would have been a rich guy if he had taken it. 
richer if he didn't, but a rich guy. But even putting that aside, the impact on society wouldn't have been the same. We had discussions with Facebook about buying Facebook, but Zuckerberg knew what he viewed as a, an outcome that he really desired and was willing to put in the blood, sweat, and tears just like we were. So execution and measurement are hugely important, and yet people let themselves uh, off the hook. And there you have it. Conveying value isn't just about the words you use, it's about the energy and conviction behind them. By following these principles and learning from the master himself, Steve Ballmer, you can become a master of conveying value too. Remember, belief is contagious, so go out there and share your vision with the world. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more video updates.